What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. So if you're like me and you're struggling with anxiety around this whole coronavirus thing, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. I have an entire playlist for coronavirus and mental health that I will link up in the info card. All right, so yesterday I did a video about eight books I suggest you read um, that should calm down your coronavirus anxiety. But today I wanted to talk about some facts and just a quick little update about myself. And um, yeah, I've, I've noticed that my anxiety has mainly come up um, around other people's behaviors, all right? For example, like just running to the store yesterday to go get some coffee creamer. I see people just hoarding toilet paper and that's when I start getting anxious. Like it is human nature to see people doing that and then being like, should I be doing that? You know what I mean? Um, if you want me to do a video about like the psychology behind like, like the group think that's happening right now, like please let me know down in the comments because it's really interesting and for me, it helps me calm down because knowing what my mind is doing helps me decrease my own anxiety. But anyways, before I jump into this, there is an amazing psychologist and author named uh, Robert Duff, and he just announced on Twitter that his two books, F Depression and F Anxiety, are free today through Sunday, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pick up a copy of F Anxiety because I already read F Depression, and it's so, so, so good. He also has anxiety courses, but anyways, Robert Duff is awesome. Make sure you follow him on Twitter and I will link his books down below. They are free. They are free <laughs> between today and Sunday, okay? But anyways, let's jump into this because knowing the facts is important if we wanna reduce our anxiety. So I don't know if this needs to be said, but I am not a doctor. I hope you guys are following credible sources about coronavirus updates and not just the mainstream media, okay? Like, you're gonna see with these stats how the mainstream media is increasing the fear, but even more so, even more so and even worse, it's people like you and me who are increasing the fear. Okay, so the first fact that I wanna start with is this one, okay? Last night, my beautiful girlfriend Tristan and I, we went to go see that movie, The Hunt, all right? Uh, theater was pretty empty, but it was opening night. I'm trying to gauge, you know, here in Las Vegas, how much it's affecting, you know, uh, our local economy, like are the casinos, you know, dead or, you know, um, the, the movie theaters are typically in casinos. But anyways, I came back home and I saw, I, I saw um, something trending on Twitter and it was 40 to, uh, 40 to 70% of the US. And I'm like, what is this? What, what is 40 to 70% of the US? Why is it trending? So I look at it and it's trending because people are quoting um, an article where um, uh, a doctor took notes from this talk at like, uh, I believe uh, UCSF, and it was trending because it said, uh, one of his notes said, 40 to 70% of the US population will be infected over the next 12 to 18 months. That's what they were sharing. That's what they were sharing, okay? That's what they were sharing. All I did was click on it. All I did was just do one click just one little easy click, okay? Because during times like this, we cannot be headline readers if we want to manage our anxiety. So the whole context of this is 40 to 70% of the US population will be infected over the next 12 to 18 months. The very next sentence says, after that level, you can start to get herd immunity. So I'm not a doctor. I wanted to see what that was all about. So I looked up, I'm like, hmm, what's herd immunity? I think I know what that means, but let me double check. Herd immunity is a form of indirect protection from infectious disease that occurs when a large percentage of a population has become immune to an infection, thereby providing a measure of protection for individuals who are not immune, okay? So again, we cannot be participating in the panic. Like I was so upset, I was so upset about this. I'm like, all you people had to do was read the very next sentence. Like that's it. Like you guys, should we be concerned? Yes, to a certain degree, but we need to take everything in the full context. Like the Joe Rogan podcast that he did with the infectious disease expert. I see people sharing these like 10 second clips, like 10 second clips about the, doc uh, the doctor saying, yeah, it's gonna get worse. I don't think people understand that. But if you listen to the whole segment, like he actually says a lot of things to help calm that anxiety. 
all right? So anyways, um, one of the doctors I follow on Twitter, he ended up uh, sharing this, and it's a data pack that was updated on March 11th. So today's March 13th, so as of two days ago. Something that Dr. Mike here on YouTube always says is like he, he talks about what date it is because that's important because things are changing so rapidly, all right? But here are some more facts, okay? And I'm gonna pop these little graphs up right around here, okay? So the majority of infectious, uh, the majority of infections are mild, mild. Series, uh, seriousness of symptoms. 80.9% are mild, like the flu, you should probably stay at home, okay? 80.9%, okay? 13.8% are severe, hospitalization, 4.7% are critical, intensive care, okay? Like, I don't mean to minimize what's going on and the deaths that are happening are absolutely terrible. Um, I saw Markiplier make a video about this and he's correct. Those of us who are healthy, should be taking precautions to help those who aren't. Like I, my parents are, you know, getting up there in age and everything like that. So I'm obviously concerned with them uh, and I'm concerned about all of your parents and grandparents and everything. Wash your hands, don't cough on people, all right? So the next one says, the bulk of people recover, okay? So 40% currently ill, 56.6% recovered, 3.5% died, okay? Uh, next, those age 60 plus are most at risk. So again, like even if you are not old, do things that will help not infect older people, okay? But look at this graph. I see uh, a lot of people just sharing graphs where you see these spikes and visually, without looking at the full context, it can make you freak out, okay? We are we are people, we are living in a time, and I'm not like this anti-social media or technology person. I love me some technology, but I do know from a psychological standpoint, because of social media and the way we skim things, the way we only read headlines, it's easy to look at a graph and see those spikes and just be like, spike bad, spike is bad, all right? We need to pay attention to it, okay? So next it says, especially those with pre-existing conditions, all right? So cardiovascular disease is number one. Um, that concerns me. I've been really thinking about my smoking. I recently switched to a jewel rather than cigarettes, but that is not the best. But now like I'm really thinking about this. Diabetes, okay? My dad is a diabetic, so that somewhat concerns me. Um, chronic uh, respiratory disease. Again, the smoking, mm, not good. Um, abnormally high blood pressure, cancer, non -exist no existing conditions, boom. 0.9%, okay? How contagious and deadly is it? It says, we don't fully know yet, but it's in this range, okay? So uh, the bottom line, the x-axis, is average number of people infected by each six person. And it's a, like one and a half to like three and a half people, right? And then the percentage who die, it's sitting there, it's still sitting, I believe, around like, 3% or so, somewhere around there, okay? So then it goes, uh, the case fatality rate varies by country. Quality of healthcare, average age of population, both factors. Listen, I don't mean to get political, but I'm gonna toss it in real quick. Like, right now is the epitome of why we need Bernie Sanders in office, okay? Quality of healthcare and people who have access to healthcare, okay? You have Bernie and Biden, Bernie's the one who wants to give you healthcare. I, and I don't know, I had to throw that in there because I'm amazed that this is, this is a prime example of why we need Medicare for all. But anyways, as you look, um, it has China, Italy, Iran, South Korea. I'm gonna link this down below if you wanna check your country. Um, for me and managing my anxiety, I'm looking at the USA. Uh, confirmed cases, 1,000. Deaths, 31. Uh, percentage is 3.1%. I think it's helpful to look because it has percentages based on the country rather than the overall percentage, okay? And this right here, this right here, I'm gonna take up the whole screen with it, okay? Flattening the curve, okay? Fast intelligent action slows pandemic effects. Stop overwhelming of healthcare systems, okay? So what you're seeing is outbreak without protective measures, okay? So it spikes in the beginning when we don't know what's going on. We, we have no clue what's going on, what's happening, how dangerous is this, should we be quarantining people, da-da-da-da-da. Boom, 
it spikes up. But flattening the curve, that's what we're seeing right now. Outbreak with protective measures, okay? There are a lot of criticisms about our president and I am very critical of him as well, but we have to be somewhat grateful for the the, um, the, the certain things that he's, he's doing, right? But again, this is why we all just need to be um, conscious of what we're doing. I am very fortunate. I was just talking with Tristan about this last night. I'm very fortunate because I have a job that um, I can work from home if I need to. Today, uh, our boss just actually said, hey, take Friday, work from home. Um, we have offices here and in Los Angeles and here in my Vegas office, it's only me and one other person. We're a little small company. Uh, but anyways, like I can work from home if I need to. But anyways, like just, just be aware of this stuff. Um, I personally... Not trying to freak out too much. I'm an introvert, so I don't go out too often. So like Tristan and I going to the movie last night, like her and I never see movies together. She she doesn't. I, I see more movies with my son. But anyways, like chill. I might do a video about things you could do at home, like if you're not going out, all right? Um, anyways, disease deaths per day worldwide, okay? This is important too. So comparing the coronavirus to the diseases that we've been dealing with for years, Okay, the ones we've been dealing with for years and how many they're still killing per day compared to the coronavirus, okay? Tuberculosis is killing 3,000 people per day. Hepatitis B is killing 2,400 people per day. Pneumonia, 2,200 people per day. HIV and AIDS, over 2,000. Malaria, over 2,000, all right? Going down, 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 going down. Coronavirus, 62, okay? So keep this kind of stuff in mind. Finally, this last graph right here says mentions in the media, okay? I've been curious about this and I was actually trying to find this stat just the other day. Um, so I'm glad that somebody put it together. It says mentions in media, SARS, 56.2 million mentions, HIV, 40 million, MERS, 23.2 million, Ebola, 11.1 million, okay? Uh, COVID-19, hashtag coronavirus, 1.1 billion mentions, all right? So we need to understand that part of our anxiety is based on how it's constantly in our face. I'm not gonna lie, like I have debated, as somebody with anxiety, I have debated muting uh, coronavirus words and terms on my uh, timeline, and it's this, it's this weird trade-off, right? Like, do I? what's more important? Calming my anxiety or staying up to date with the news? You know what I'm saying? Like, because I think both are important. Um, maybe I'll do something where like, I don't know, maybe you can like, because there are programs out there like the Freedom App where you can limit like uh, certain website usage and stuff. I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Because it used to be like, you know, you refresh like, you know, Twitter and there's just some dumb thing like trending or like, it's like the K-pop fans like freaking out on somebody or some celebrity doing something dumb. But now it's just, you know, coronavirus, you know, NBA is stopping their season, NHL stopping their season, Disneyland shutting down, uh, all the schools in Ohio are shutting down, colleges are shutting down. Um, so yeah, it's a much different landscape right now on social media. But anyways, like I said, if you want me to do a video about uh, the psychology behind like kind of these social contagions and how we we make each other freak out, let me know. And don't forget, Robert Duff's books are free Friday to Sunday. They will be linked down in the description below. Go get yourself a copy, all right? And make sure you follow him on, on Twitter too. He has a podcast, he does a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my books over at TheRewiredSoul.com, as well as the merch from the merch store. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.